In this tutorial, I will be demonstrating how to create a visibility edit with a character model. Visibility edits are Wi-Fi safe. For this example, I am using the Pokemon called Rowlet. This is my traditional workflow with how I operate in Blender. If at any point in the video I do something that is inefficient or not optimal, feel free to comment below a better solution if you find it necessary. The free program I am using is called Blender version 3.3. I am using the Smash Blender plugin created by SSBU Carlos and the Cats plugin created by Hotox and Give Me All Your Cats. I am also using Maya Config plugin, so some hotkeys or navigation may differ from yours. Links to these plugins will be located in the description of this video. I will be making visibility edits for Rowlet's wings flapping instead of Jigglypuff's balloon jumps. The Rowlet model has an open wings mesh and an inactive wings mesh. I then looked at video reference to see when Rowlet normally flies to see the natural range of the wingspan. Next, I will be going into pose mode. Then I will be posing the wings to the extremes of the range of the wingspan according to my reference. While still in pose mode in the cats plugin, I will click apply as rest pose. Then I will go into object mode and click on the open wings mesh I just rotated. Afterwards, I will copy it with control C. I will press control Z to undo before my rotation of the open wings mesh. Then press control V to paste the recently rotated open wings mesh. I prefer keeping the pasted meshes in its own hierarchy before merging because I want to be able to work off of the mesh I last used with its specific armature rotations without messing with the original armature. Here I am posing the wings to the highest position. Using the same process I did for the previous pasted mesh, I now have both extremes of the wing rotations, so I can now fill in the in-between meshes. I will reference how many frames Jigglypuff's jump animation is, so I know approximately how many wing flap meshes to use for the jump animation. I have Jigglypuff open in another Blender scene and window. In the Smash Blender plugin tool, while in object mode, I click the skeleton or armature and navigate to the animation importer drop down category and click import Nuan MB, which will prompt me to import an animation. Jigglypuff has one initial jump and five extra jumps. I then imported A03 jump aerial F dot Nuan MB because it is the first balloon jump Jigglypuff does after their initial jump where they do a flip. Going to the animation tab, I will see Jigglypuff and I will switch to the orthographic view so it is easier for me to view the animation by clicking numpad 5, which may be a different hotkey for you. If you want to see what your hotkey is, you can go to edit, then preferences, then key map. Then while in the name section, type orthographic to see what your hotkey is. Do that for any key bind that you find may differ from me. Make sure to save preferences here if you have something you want changed. I then pressed Ctrl F2 to switch to the left side view. While we are about to preview Jigglypuff's animation, I will click the Object Data Properties section. Then click on Ultimate Animation Data. And then Ultimate Visibility Track Entries. You will see all the default visibility meshes for Jigglypuff with drivers and their toggles in the animation depending on which frame you are selected on. We see here that this animation has 51 frames. Keep in mind that 60 frames equates to 1 second. Blender defaults to 24 frames per second, so you may want to change to 60 frames per second for better reference. To do that, we will go to Output Properties section, then under Format section, change Frame Rate from 24 to 60. Notice, the developers animated Jigglypuff's hands to move downward when floating upward. The hands become positioned lowest on frame 12. This may be an indicator on how to animate the wings flapping due to the translation of float Jigglypuff has for the move. 
You can verify in-game or SSBH editor when you think Jigglypuff bounces from mid-air to when she starts to lose momentum in the animation. I decided to start the wings flapping animation with the highest wing mesh at the beginning to have the greatest impact of range to match Jigglypuff's arms motion. In-game, I noticed Jigglypuff only gains air while inflated, so we will see in the animation that on approximately frame 35 is when she starts to deflate back to normal size, which is when she starts to fall. So, I will have the lowest wing mesh start turning into the highest wing mesh from frame 35 until 51. Keep in mind, I will be considering falling wing meshes, which will include a wing mesh that is even higher positioned or rotated than what we previously considered the highest wing mesh, because that will be the falling wings pose. I like to animate generally in twos, meaning one mesh per two frames, but can depend on the length of the animation or function of the visibility edit. Even though it will be 12 frames from highest wing mesh to the lowest wing mesh, which means 6 visibility meshes, 6 times 2 equals 12, we will be considering the difference in frame count from 35 to 51, which is 16 frames, so 8 visibility meshes. But what about frame 13 to 35? That is a 22 frame difference, which would mean 11 visibility meshes in a downward wing position. Just in case, so it does not look too static, we will have a few meshes during those 22 frames in a slightly rotated downward position. Because 22 only divides into 2 evenly, we'll have to utilize the brief frame time and have the first mesh for 7 frames, the second mesh for 8 frames, and the third mesh for 7 frames, which totals up to 22 frames. So we will have three parts of the wing flapping animation to consider. Part 1, downward flap, which is 6 meshes during 12 frames. Part 2, downward hold, which is 3 meshes during 22 frames. Part 3, rising flap to fall pose, which is 8 visibility meshes during 16 frames. For part 3, we will refer it as RF to FP. RF to FP's meshes will reuse the downward flap meshes in reverse order and have two other meshes that lead into the fall pose. Going back to Rowlet's blender scene, we will continue making the in-between visibility meshes the same way I made the first visibility mesh. Now while I'm in Jigglypuff scene, I'm going to copy the suffix for the visibility object. Then I'll select all of the open wing meshes that I pasted. Then I will go to edit, then battery name. I'll click set name, go to make sure it's on suffix, and then I will paste the visibility edit phrase. And now I'm going to edit all of the names of the meshes, so they are ordered chronologically from highest position to lowest position, so it's easy for me to understand when working with the animation. I'm going to hide the original open wing meshes. After that, I will click the mesh and go to Object, then Parent, then Clear and Keep Transformation. This basically separated the copied armature from the copied mesh. I will then right-click the copied armature and click Delete Hierarchy, because it is no longer needed. Next, I will click the copied mesh and control click Rowlet's armature and press P to set the parent to be with empty groups. I will click the copied mesh and make sure to delete the shape keys in the object data properties because Smash Ultimate models do not export properly, if at all, with shape keys present. I decided to call the mesh open wing underscore viz underscore o underscore obj shape. Note the appended suffix. 
This is how the Smash Blender plugin will recognize that it is a visibility mesh, so make sure to include it on your meshes that you want to be able to toggle for any animations. I will export Rowlet with the visibility meshes accounting for those animations. After exporting Rowlet, I imported Rowlet's files back into a new Blender scene, then loaded the first balloon jump animation, A03 Jump Aerial F. Heading over to the dope sheet, we will see the visibility entries. Click the triangle to expand. You will only see the default visibility objects for Jigglypuff. If we go to the object data properties, you will see the down arrow. And then click auto fill visibility entries. You will see the new visibility meshes in the ultimate visibility track entries section. For the new visibility meshes to appear in your dope sheet, you will have to click the down arrow button. Then insert keyframes for all entries on frame 1. What I do is right click that and click add to quick favorites so it is quicker to use. My quick favorites appears when I press shift tab in the viewport. In the dope sheet the new visibility meshes will appear in which you can toggle them from the right side on any frame located in the dope sheet. In case the new visibility meshes don't appear yet, click the down arrow button and click refresh visibility drivers. Now I will show the process of keying frames for the wing flapping animations via visibility edits. Carlos recommends toggling auto keying for visibility edits. What I'll be doing here is toggling each mesh that I want toggled on and off for every two frames. Note I'm making sure to insert keyframe so it can register the frame data. Once I have my 12 frames, I'm satisfied, so I will select all of the meshes for those 12 frames. And then I will duplicate them over to the next frame after 12, which is 13. And then I will mirror them so they can reverse. And then I will press W to move the frame selection back over to 13. And just like that, the wings flap. After creating the animation from start to finish, I'll go to the Smash Blender plugin, then the Animation Exporter category, and export the animation. It will export with the default prefix of Smush Blender Import, which you can remove once you bring it into your mod folder with the correct folder structure to read your new animations. If you want to load a new animation in this Blender scene, you might have an issue where your dope sheet becomes blank. To solve that, you click this border and just drag it up barely and drag it back. And that's how I'm able to refresh all the data in the dope sheet. And there we have it. Now you know how to create visibility edits for your character models. Try to be creative and consider all animations possible so you can stand out with your mods.